So here we are in the wood yard. This is Mike from Life in the 906 from the UP, or Uper, right? I'm a Uper. Yep, lifelong Uper. I took a couple little vacations, <laughs> but pretty much a lifelong Uper. Well, it's a good place to live. Um, it's a great place. Great to place live. to live, but you better have a job. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, right? Yep. So anyway, he came down today to visit. We're going to talk firewood for a little while here for a video, so it'll be kind of fun. So first question I have is, when did you start doing firewood? Uh, mom and dad burned firewood, so as soon as I could be sort of useful in the in the firewood yard, I was so doing about, firewood. Same as me, about seven years old. Yep. Lift that wood, carry it to the truck. Yep. Stack it. <laughs> yep. 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 And then haul it into the house and keep the fire going and yep. carry the ashes out, all that good stuff we got to do. Yep. So I've been doing it forever, I guess. So then when did you start cutting like for yourself? I mean, do you, have you always burned wood yourself too? Well, actually I don't burn wood. Oh, yeah, I don't either. Um, I have a fireplace. I don't even have bit. a fireplace. No kidding. <laughs> no, I, when I built my new house, I didn't want a fireplace, so we wow. didn't put one in. Um, my brother burns in a fireplace, and okay. my dad burns to heat his house. So you cut for your dad is what you're doing. Well, I help. <laughs> yeah. He does a lot of his own cutting, but uh, yeah. Um, grandfather used to cut a lot of firewood. He heated with firewood, and he just always had a supply of it. Nice. It's like you... He was nice. two. He was the two, three years ahead guy. Yeah, he well, that's, always had a pile that's, of it. There. That is the way to be. That is the way to be. So, so yeah. And then when did you start selling it then? I mean, when did uh, you get into that? I started maybe 10, 12 years ago. Sold a little bit. Somebody wanted mm -hmm. some. I said, sure, I'll cut some and sell it to you. And uh, you know, it just kind of grew. And then I kind of backed off on it. There was a couple of years where I don't think either one of my saws ever started. No. Oh. Jeez. I was on uh, something else and then uh, just kind of getting back into it now. We're starting to do bundles and... Now you're cutting on your own land too though, right? Yep. For now we're cutting everything on our own land. And you've got how many acres? Uh, family property, there's 180, 190 nice. acres. Nice, nice, nice. And what kind of woods do you have? What's what's in there, maple? Uh, it's mostly maple and mm -hmm. then our soft woods are hemlock and we got a few white pine. There's mm -hmm. a stand of oak, but uh, we don't cut any of them. Hmm. Feed the deer with the acorns. Oh, that yeah, it's more important to feed the deer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> that's we, good. we have lots of maple. So. so you sell a lot of maple, and that's and it's hard maple for the most part. Yep, we and do have some soft maple, um, but mostly hard maple. Yeah, and that's what people want. That's what a lot of people heat with. Uh, it's the wood we have. Right. Um, right. I really haven't shopped around to see what other people have as far as... Uh, well, whatever you have in your woods is probably what you have in your area. And my guess is in the UP, because I've been there a few times, it's a lot of maples. Yeah. Yep. That's what I would say is the primary wood. You probably have some birch too. Yeah, not, and the birch doesn't get very big and then it right. dies off. Right, so. right. And then you probably have um, popple, aspen. You probably have that. Yep. Yep. And then, like you say, you probably got white pine. You probably have some red pine, um, probably some jack pine in there too i would think yeah and yep. then probably have some tamarack or larch down in the lower areas probably yeah um, we're, we're all our property is pretty much hardwood ridges yeah. so we don't have yeah. like we don't we've probably got 15 cedar trees on the whole thing oh, yeah. nothing's low nothing's right. wet right. so the maple and then we do have a little bit of cherry also Oh, but yeah. they they die off too. They don't get very big. Yeah, they don't. Well, this is a pile of cherry we're sitting on, and this is the average size of stuff I get. I don't. I mean, a big cherry tree is going to be like a, you know, 16 inch. Or that's a big one. I mean, yep. generally it's you know the eight to ten is about the biggest they get. And you can see there's a lot of this stuff here that's you know four six inches. Yep. Um, but it's my favorite wood because it smells so good. Yes, Cuts it does. easy, splits easy. I just love it. Um, although I like all of it. Um, that's the one thing I don't like about oak. Everybody says, oh, oak is so great. And yes, I sell the most oak, <laughs> but that dang stuff is heavy, number one. Number two, it takes forever to dry. It does. Um, any other kind of wood, you know, you can cut it, split it, dry it, and, you know, four to six months, it's good to go. Yep. Whereas oak, it's a full year minimum, and that's if you split it down, two years if you leave it big. Yep. It's just dry so slow, so. And so it doesn't then, smell very good, does it? No, it smells like puke, <laughs> just like puke, That's red oak anyway. White oak smells better, I think. Um, so then you started selling and did you sell, are you selling like in the cord or are you selling face, face cord. cords? Or face are you, cords, are you yeah. doing any bundles at all? And yep, we're doing the bundles. About three years ago, I threw some bundles at the end of the driveway, mm -hmm. put a, stuck a sign in the yeah, ground. Yeah. 
and they sat there all summer and nobody bought them and I I gave them to the neighbor or whatever. Really? So why didn't you think, because you didn't have an actual stand? Or? I, I guess it was not the greatest presentation. That could be, yeah. yeah. So this year we built a stand yeah. and uh, put it at the end of the drive and it's been doing great. We're going to well, sell three, four hundred bundles. Holy smokes, that's a bunch at the end of the driveway. That's awesome. Yeah. So now you got just, don't you have two locations though? I thought I saw you had that one yeah, other one. Yeah, we do. Um, a friend of mine has a uh, hunting camp that he rents out as a Airbnb. Oh, okay. So okay. we knew we weren't going to sell a bunch up there. I kind of put it up there just right. a convenience for his customers. Right, right. Um, Because he rents it all, all winter too, so. Oh, okay. Summer, you know, most people are going in the woods and grabbing firewood, but mm -hmm. he gets people skiing and snowmobilers. Oh, sure. And, you know, with the snows four feet deep, you can't Right, fire right. Wood. And that's the, the vacationing people. That's why a lot of people um, do so well at campgrounds and with bundles or even just bundles where you're close to a campground is because people are going there to relax. They're not going there to make firewood, and they want it to burn now, not, right. you know, next year. And selling bundles, it's it's fantastic by doing it that way. So if you've got any campgrounds around by you, that's I've been just recently starting to deliver more to campgrounds where I'm selling full trailer loads full to people that are there all the time. That, yep. And I got one customer in particular I deliver to there, and he knows everybody. And now I think just just this year alone, I have sold probably in the neighborhood of 30 face cords, yeah. right in that little circle he's in. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's. It's amazing. Yeah, some the, people go and they camp for the whole summer. And when they're camping, they have a fire going 24 <laughs> hours <Yep>. a day. <laughs> they need material to burn. Yeah, <laughs> so, 70, 80 degrees, it doesn't they matter. Got the gotta the they got the fire going. They got to have the fire going, yeah, because there's kids constantly playing with it and they're cooking on it. And, yep. Or they're just sitting by it. They have a reason to sit and drink beer, so, I mean, that's what yeah. they do. <laughs> got to have smoke in your eyes while you're drinking beer. Yeah, something to complain about. Right. Or to keep the bugs away, <laughs> as they say. So you started doing the... Uh, that's a nice loud truck. I started doing the uh, the bundles, and then you're wrapping them, right? Yep, just uh, hand wrapping them. Hand -wrapping. We got a little jig set up. And, okay. Uh, and then when you're putting the bundles out, what? How many do you put out like at a time? Do you try to keep it full all the time? How yeah, do you approach we, that? We try to keep like 12, 14 in there. Mm -hmm. I think if we pack the shed, it would hold like 20 or so. Okay. But we don't want them like falling out. Right, so right. So we. Well, I've heard people that do merchandise displays like in grocery stores and they say that you don't want it so full that people can't get at it you want to actually have it so like i think three quarters is the word i've heard quite often you want yeah. three quarters full um, because it looks like there's space where you can grab it and and the other thing that i've found talking to a couple of merchandising people that work in grocery stores that do stocking is a lot of times they find their stuff sells the fastest when there's the least amount <laughs> Well, you gotta get it before it's gone. Cause they're like, oh, there's only three left. I better get all three. Yep. Um, and I know that people hoard stuff, especially toilet paper, <laughs> um, because they can't get it or they're limited supply. So limiting your your product sometimes is a good thing. Yeah. So you don't want to overstock it. But like, you get a big weekend, like Labor Day weekend or Memorial Day weekend or Fourth of July weekend, you want to be fully stocked, don't yep. you? Yeah. Yeah, and you know, the bundle shed is 45 feet from the storage, so. If it starts to get low, we just grab them from the garage, run them down there, good, stock it good, up. Good. We kind of keep an eye on it, especially those those high traffic weekends. Right. What about have you ever done um, the racks where you've got you know sections where you've got larger quantities? Do you do that yet? We haven't done that yet, but it's probably going to happen next yeah. year. It seems like some of the guys that I watch that do bundles say that they. they they don't sell many bundles, but they sell those racks all the time. Right, right. Well, I know one guy, one guy's from Michigan. What's his name? Outdoors, is Outdoors Michigan guy or Michigan Outdoors, um, is that the guy? I can't think of his name even. I know his name, but I can't think of it. He's got the beard. Dean. Dean, yes, that's it. Yeah, he sells a lot of face cords yeah. in his rack. He moves yep. a lot of it. He sells a lot of ash. And he, I know for a time there, he was out of wood. So, yep. and then other guys I've talked to too, they say the same thing that when you put out your racks like that, it's amazing and how fast they will go. And a lot of people that are camping for like a weekend, they know that three or four bundles is not enough. And they'll buy the sections where they're buying what, what would equal probably like a, either a half of a face cord or a third of a face cord, something like that. Yeah, I've seen guys do all the way from a bundle to a small rack to a right. half a face cord, you know. Right. You got so many choices there. I 
Yeah. Our well, bundles are pretty good size too. They're, yeah, you do big ones. We're doing a one by one, so. Yeah, you got pretty big. Everybody big tells bundles. me we're giving wood away, but I don't know. I mean. Hey, if you're making money, it's all that matters. <laughs> right? so. I People get that. I, I get told that too because I don't do bundles because I do more limited bulk. I guess is what I would call it, where I'm doing full cords in a dump you know and I'm, I'm getting whatever i'm getting and people say you know if you broke that down into bundles you realize you double your money well the thing is is i have to bundle them and then i got to go supply them and i have to have the stands and yes i might get into that someday but i like the fact i can throw a full cord in it's pre-measured yep. i just chuck it in i can have it in the trailer in 30 minutes i can drive down the road five minutes dump it and come back done yep um so that's kind of kind of my thing but i'm interested in the bundle thing and i know that someday i'll, I'll get there so um, maybe you could sell bulk bundles i mean yeah maybe I, yeah well see i've got i've got a couple people now i sell firewood to that they bundle it and then they resell it ah. so and i'm fine with that because i just don't have time for it right now i mean someday I'm as long as you're it. getting your money and they, yeah, you know. yeah i'm basically a middleman and middlemen usually do pretty good so because yeah. <laughs> in the middle you can, can kind of dictate what comes and goes so yep. I'm okay with that. My brother just put a stand up and he's doing really good with it. Um, but, and he's by two campgrounds and he found that his bundles right away sold real fast. And then he put his sections where he's got, uh, it's like a third of a face cord. Yep. Um, and he said, like once a week, it'll just be empty. So he said he's gonna, next year he's gonna expand and then do a full cord and then a half of a, I mean, a, a full face cord and then a half of a face cord on the other side of his drive. And so can do that kind of stuff. So when you're doing your bundles, um, what do you what well what's like a, like a good weekend for you what what's a good uh i was just looking at the numbers because i was going to do some sort of a bundle update we're probably mm -hmm. going to take the stand down november 1st i would think why is that snow yeah it's right on the highway it'd be destroyed by the plows so. oh yeah yeah so we we actually have a bundle season i guess in the up yeah yeah um, well you guys get 80 feet of snow so right a lot yeah. of people don't realize that tell them what do you get for snow well you know three four five feet and that's know. that's like yeah on the ground yeah, yeah. Like you can't walk in the woods deep right right yeah yeah he's kind of in a snow bolt area so he gets serious snow but on <laughs> on a good weekend you know we might sell 20. Hmm. usually our days are like thursday it'll start yeah like monday tuesday wednesday nothing will go out right. of there right. then thursday a few will go and then friday of course is the big day and nice. then saturday but now the fall weather's coming it seems like people are buying them more during the week too I'm assuming yeah. it's local people, you know. Right, local people. My brother Kenny lives on a off of a highway on a side street, kind of like almost a dead end road. It's like an old highway, and he has no signs at all, and he sells mostly cedar, hmm. which he bought a whole truckload because he sells so much of it. Because people that live up there are buying it for kindling, for in their wood stoves. Yeah. And he said people will come and they'll buy you know three four bundles at a time because they're buying it for kindling and he, so he sells it all year round and uh -oh. he said a lot of the campfire people like it because it smells so good and it burns so easy that they like the the cedar so and then he sells a lot of his other wood um the bulk stuff he's selling you know the big heating wood he's selling um you know many cords at a time um, but he says the bundles cedar people love it they mm. love it so it, there's there's ways to make money with firewood a lot of different ways so now, are you thinking about expanding and doing different locations then too? Yeah, we're going to try to get a couple more spots with the... Uh, That'd be your brother's job? Your brother's name is what? Yep. My brother's name's Ted. He's my PR guy. So Ted, if you're watching this, get off your lazy butt and get him some more locations. <laughs> and we have started talking to gas stations, but uh, some of them are saying that it's got to be kiln dried in order for yeah. them to sell. Yeah. Well, that might be your um, chain type places. If it's right. like your quick trips. Yep at the chain places or your BPs or whatever shell stations, they might be saying that. And I think they might have been sold that because the guy that's supplying them might have a kiln. I think that might be why they're telling them the why they want to have yeah, it like that. Yeah, I might dig into the actual uh, legality of, <laughs> yeah, does it yeah. have to be kiln dried? Yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't know for sure. Well, I know sometimes they want it like that because for um, campground for state parks, yep. I know you're supposed to buy locally can't be brought in for from whatever distance and some of them even want certified kiln drying wood because they don't want bugs coming in right as if the bugs can't fly or move because <laughs> they do <laughs> another well, we don't have any ash trees up there so we're yeah, not worried about yeah, that one anyway. yeah yeah well 
there could be some oak thing that happens. I mean, or, or there is, there's oak wilt. There could be some maple thing that happens and wipe out all your woods. Yeah. And it could happen. Yeah. I mean, it happened to the elm trees back in the 70s or whenever that was. Um, there's um, the oak wilt, which is common right now all through this area, which is where I get a lot of this barkless oak that's over off to the side here. Um, cherry trees get some type of a disease that will kill them. Birch trees get some type of a disease that kills them. And then there's the emerald ash borer that's killing them. So, I mean, who knows what's coming down the road. Right. There's going to probably be some other disease real soon that will kill off all kinds of stuff. Well, there's also the beetles for the um, spruce beetles that are oh, killing yeah. a lot of the spruce swamps yeah. off, too. I've so. seen a lot of that from Canada and stuff. Yeah. They got it. Really yeah. Yeah. But it's isn't, just, isn't the ash borer, isn't that like really bad? Like yeah. one of the worst ones? Yeah, it's wiping everything out. Like oh, yeah. completely gonna... Well, I was talking to the, my logger, John, and a couple other loggers I was talking to about it, and they said they sell tons and tons of ash right now. Everybody's buying it. It's because it's there and because they're cutting it because it's dying. But like one of the guys said, he says, right now we've got lots of it. Next year there'll be lots of it. The year after that there's going to be a little bit less. And he said in three or four years, there'll be none. It'll be gone. Because even the trees that have died will have tipped over, broke off, they'll be on the ground, they'll be rotting, they'll be no good. Yeah. So right now we're in a glut, but eventually it's gonna be gone. So there's there's that. I mean, that stuff, that kind of stuff happens. Oh yeah. So anything can happen. Then with the ash, once it's on the ground, it doesn't, it rots pretty quick, doesn't it? Uh, most wood does. The only wood that really lasts any kind of time is oak. Um, oak lasts really good. Yeah. And uh, locust. Locust is pretty good too. It's kind of got its own preservative that it'll last quite a while. Because I know um, with the maple trees, even if they're standing dead, they're if rotten. the bark doesn't come off them, if the bark comes off them, they're just they dry. solid as a rock. Right, right, right. If the bark stays on them, they're right. a couple years, they're done. Yeah, and birch trees, get they rot real fast. Yeah. You got about a year or so, maybe. And if it hits the ground, if it's on the ground, you got about a week. Yeah. <laughs> it's They just turned to, they literally turned to mush. Yep. Um, I, it's not a week, <laughs> it's, but it's fast. Um, but yeah, a lot of trees rot real fast. So that's why a lot of people that are anti-logging or anti-killing of trees, they don't realize that it's natural. The stuff dies, it falls over, it rots. Um, and harvesting the wood, especially on a selective basis, is a good thing. Yeah. yeah, it cleans the wood out. And they wonder why they're having so many problems with wildfires in California. They don't log. And all the trees are dying and they're turning brown, they're dying off. And, then they're having fires because that's nature's way of clearing it out so new stuff can grow. Yeah. That's why logging is not bad. And for anybody that's against logging, I always have one question I ask if you know what it is. Yep. What do you wipe with? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Probably came from a tree. It's from a tree. Exactly. And those of you that buy all your stuff on Amazon, where do you think those boxes come from? <laughs> Trees. Yep. <laughs> so. Oh, one, one addition to the bundle. Oh, sure. Something I'm thinking about now is with the new sawmill that we have. Oh yeah, that was it, the sawmill. Yeah, we should have known with the hat. We are gonna have tons of slabs, which are oh, yeah. great for bundling as soon as I figure out how to cut them efficiently. Yeah, yeah. Because they're kind of like a snake. They're all over the place, so I'm gonna probably build a rack or a You need a rack. I know a, a guy, uh, I know a guy that, that does this. Um, he's a actual, he's a trucker, but he hauls logs. Okay. And he has a, a maple syrup maple syrup shack oh i remember seeing that yeah, video yeah well yep. he buys he gets slabs and he buys them in bundles he gets a, a full cord at a time they're banded he leaves them right in there he sets them right into a with his tractor he can set it right into a jig and when he sets it in there or from his logging truck he takes it you know the boom he takes yep. it and he drops it right into a, a a jig he's got and then he just cuts it into pieces right on there and that's all he does and it works great he said he leaves him leaves he leaves well he just made it out of like chunks of wood I mean it's nothing special yep. um, and he said that another way he did it before that he left him right in his trailer and he cut right in his trailer he just would cut down as close as he could get and then get most of it done and then you know the last bottom layer where he couldn't cut down into the trailer then he would go from there and you know stack them up and cut again but yeah he said leave them right in the bundles that's what he did yeah because we're gonna have a bunch of slabs hardwood and softwood slabs so you know we're gonna do something with them right well that's good not throw them in a big pile and burn them yeah 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 you want to use them in a little pile and sell them you want to use as much of the wood as possible we, we uh, you know there's some that you just can't do anything with yeah. you know full of knots or yeah. real thin but yeah well i get that too i get a lot of debris that falls off and people think oh you should make mulch out of that you should do this with it you should do that with it you only have so much time you only got so much energy that 
I make firewood. That's what I do. Yep. So <laughs> you got to kind of do the thing you're best at. And yes, if there's some extra things you can do, like when I stopped in at Frank's up there on, yep. um, what town is he out of? Somewhere around Pestigal. there. Peshtigal. That's it. He's out of Peshtigal. Right out there. Yeah, they use everything. 100%. They had a part. They had a part where they had all their cookies. They had a spot where they had all of their their bark. They had all their sawdust in a different part, and they sell everything. But they got the volume to do it. That's oh, the yeah. other thing people don't realize when they think, "Oh, I should be using all my, all my you know little chunks that come off, or all my debris. I should be you know selling that, or I should do this with it, or I should separate all of my sawdust out." Well, that'd be great and fine, but. You know, if you got a couple hundred pounds of sawdust, I mean, who's going to want to buy that? I mean, sure, there's some people I could sell it, but to find the person, then get it to them, and then how do you handle all that? I mean, yeah. you, you, it's it's a matter of logistics when it comes and marketing. You can't just always sell everything just because you have it. I mean, plus the sawdust is good in your wood yard; it'll go right back into the soil. Yeah, and yeah, it's just it, nature will take care of right. it. Right, nature will take care Definitely. of it. Definitely. Well, that was good. I think we got enough talked about with, with this topic. We kind of covered a little bit. It was nice having you stop in. Thanks yeah. for being here today. So there he is. It's Mike from Life in the 906. I always got to think the numbers right because it's his area code. <laughs> Up in the UP, he's got his own, own channel there. You should watch it. He does a little bit of everything. He's got some good stuff, so check him out. So that's it for my channel for today. So between now and tomorrow, get outside and get cutting. And what do you say at the end of my videos? Good night, Irene. There you go. <laughs> <laughs>